Talbot family. We're so glad you're able to join us. And I just ask you, wherever you are, just to stop what you're doing and just declare this song, just to sing with all our voices raised and just to tell God that we love him. We just love him with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. So wherever you are, let's just sing this together. tonight. It would be our minds and our hearts, our life, our words, our whole being. Lord, I pray that our whole being would be unto worship to our God. Because Lord, we know it's more than just words that you want. Father, it's our heart. So Lord, I pray that as we continue to worship and as we hear your word, that Lord, you would and pierce our hearts in those areas that we need. And that, Lord, our, our ears would be ready to hear and we would be quick to surrender. Lord, I thank you for this night that you have given us, this moment where we can come together. Lord, what a holy moment to come and worship our Savior together as one, one body, one body of Christ. 
thank you so much for this time. We ask that you continue to be with us as we hear the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good evening, Calvary family. Thanks for being here Thursday night. Uh, I uh, trust that you've had a wonderful week. Uh, I trust that you've been enjoying the weather and that you're doing good. Uh, this Sunday is Palm Sunday, and uh, we're going to be preaching, uh, we, I'm not me, well, I'm me, not me and a mouse in my pocket, but I'm going to be sharing uh, a Palm Sunday message uh, that we call when, when, when Hope Comes to Town. When hope comes to town, and uh, if maybe if you're a big YouTube fan, all of a sudden the uh, when love comes to town just started running through your head, and so you can change that word out. When hope comes to town, as we talk about Jesus uh, this Sunday, I think Jesus is a good topic. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm excited. We got Good Friday coming up, April second at 7 p.m. Uh, Easter, April fourth, um, and so we're at nine and eleven. We're excited about that. I'm really it's. It's a, it's a good season, and even though things are different, we're, we're doing good. Um, and I, I'm happy, really. I, I'm happy. So, uh, you know, you might, uh, you, you might not know all of the doctrine of our church, and, and that's pretty common within churches is that um, most people go to a church that they enjoy, not necessarily knowing all the doctrinal positions and stuff. You know, we're an Assemblies of God church, and uh, the Assemblies of God founded in 1914. Um, we have 16 core tenets of faith. And uh, all of them are important into our uh, into who we are. Most of them are universally true for most churches. We obviously have our Pentecostal distinctives uh, about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues that not every church in the world adheres to or, or, or believes, and that's okay. Um, but one of the tenets of our faith is uh, it's called the blessed hope, and the 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 term the blessed hope actually comes from Titus. But uh, the, the concept of the blessed hope is that one day, uh, all, those, all the saints that have fallen asleep, which is a, a biblical euphemism for died, uh, that have fallen asleep, and those that are still alive will be caught up into the blessed hope of the return of Jesus Christ. And that is where we place our eternal hope is in the return of Jesus. But here's what, here's what it says in Titus chapter 2. Uh, and I'm going to read verses 11 to 14. It says, For the grace of God... That brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self controlled, upright, godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. These then are teachings you should teach, encourage and rebuke uh, with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. Listen, what a great term, blessed hope. We talk about hope and we know that Jesus is our living hope. But I love that idea that even though Jesus has redeemed us, saved us, uh, called us his own, uh, give us an anointing and presence of his power and authority, uh, there's still more there's still more. There's going to come a day that um, we get to be caught up, get to be with him. And so we, even as Christians, even though we've received salvation, we have more to hope for and to hope in, and that's Jesus. I don't know if you've ever been on a plane that um, got stuck in a holding pattern. Um, I, I, I had that happen one time. Where was I? I was flying into Charlotte, North Carolina, I think it was. And uh, we just had to circle the runway. And we circled for like 45 minutes. And so, um, and I was like nervous. I, you know, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a good flyer. I'm not personally. I need to be in a plane. Um, but I, I, I enjoy flying. I'm a good traveler. I like, I like doing it. Um, I look forward to doing it again because <laughs> I haven't done it in a while. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things that um, the, the plane circles and circles and circles and circles. And what happens in those seasons while you're waiting is that tension builds up because then you start worrying about other things, right? You start worrying about, do we have enough fuel? Not that the pilot's going to run it by you. Um, do, I, do we, you know, I, I really have to go to the bathroom, but they tell me I got to stay seated. You know, uh, the person next to me is drooling while they're snoring and you got all these things going on around you. And uh, what you start to feel as you are waiting to land you can see the runway, right? You can see where you're going. You can see other planes in the air circling around you. And you're like, okay, well, 
eventually we're going to come down one way or the other. Um, but that tension builds. And I think that tension is very similar to what we feel in life. We feel that tension of the fact that we have been saved by grace and we know we're going to go to heaven, but we're not there yet. And what it, what it, what it, what it, what it, ugh, what it says here. It says, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, comma, while we wait for the blessed hope. Waiting is hard. Waiting is hard. But the truth is that if we do it well, the hope for the suffering that we have endured is Jesus Christ. The hope for the challenges we faced, is Jesus Christ. The blessed hope is that one day we'll be with our Lord and Savior. We as Christians get an opportunity in this world to share that hope with those that do not know Jesus. We have to demonstrate that we have learned how to wait and live a life that honors God. Listen, no one likes the grumpy traveler on the airplane that starts making a scene because, get out of my way, I gotta go out to buy it. Nobody, nobody likes that. Nobody wants a Christian to tell them about Jesus when that Christian doesn't live a hope-filled life. So let me encourage you tonight. Um, live with hope. The blessed hope that there's more to come, but also live a life that honors God because that'll open the doors to show people the hope in you and to live a life that gives hope through you. God's called you to something great. I know he has. And you're going to be used in a mighty way. And I pray that Jesus would anoint your path, give you divine opportunities, and that you, especially in this season of Easter, would be able to share God's love with people. Let's pray. Father, this evening, I pray, I pray that you would fill us with hope, fill us with joy, fill us with anticipation of your return. But in the meantime, let us be full of your presence, live obedient lives that honor you, and share the gospel with those that need it. Hope in us, hope through us. I pray that we would live lives that exemplify who you have called us to be. Be with us tonight in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Uh, look forward to seeing you on Sunday, 9 and 11, Palm Sunday. It's going to be a great day. Uh, look forward to it. God bless. Have a great night.